let's get the FTC perspective. William Kovacic's with us. He is a former acting chair of the Federal Trade Commission, former member of the FTC and currently professor of law at George Washington University. Professor, it's wonderful to have some time with you. What does Pleasure this mean here. for the FTC? They are taking big swings, but they seem to be missing. When they've taken swings based on theories that are a bit edgy, that involve using theories uh, about vertical acquisitions, such as Microsoft Activision, they're having a hard time in court. Uh, in short, they're having a difficult time expanding the frontier of enforcement to include theories that have been de-emphasized in the past. And this is going to give the tech community confidence that with certain types of transactions, especially if they're willing to offer concessions, which the parties did here, uh, that they have a fighting chance of prevailing when they get to court. And to that end, I mean, should the FTC sort of, in a way, be a little bit buoyed by the fact that they force such changes or indeed the worldwide competition authorities out there? If I were the FTC, I'd be claiming credit for the changes. I would say that if I hadn't been watching, if I hadn't intervened, the concessions would not have been given so directly and clearly. Uh, the judge in the case, in her opinion today, emphasized the clarity with which the commitments have been made. So I certainly do claim some credit for that. Without my intervention, those would not been, have been presented so clearly and so directly. What's so interesting is almost sort of five minutes apart of the headline that we understood that the U.S. court is sort of giving this blessing to Microsoft. We heard that the EU, it's reporting from the Financial Times, but the EU might well allow the VMware Broadcom deal to go through. What about some of these other deals coming down the pike? It's, it feels as though you think these could start to get through if they make these sorts of concessions. I'm thinking of Broadcom, VMware, Kroger, Albertsons and the like. If parties think very clearly and honestly at the beginning of the process about what the vulnerabilities will be, where the regulators are most likely to intervene and proceed to come up with solutions to address those, their prospects of success improve dramatically. Uh, the European Union, uh, the European uh, Competition Directorate has been quite willing to accept concessions. Uh, the courts in these U.S. cases are willing to look at the suggested fix. This is the, tr the case in today in Microsoft Activision. It was the case for the administrative law judge in Illumina Grail. It's been the case in a couple of the, a couple of the challenges that the Department of Justice has brought. In short, what parties are having success with is coming to the court and saying, we concede that there might be competitive problems, but we have a solution. And just because the authorities are not willing to embrace them doesn't mean that you, judge, should not endorse them. That strategy has been effective. What then, when Lena Khan first came in, much was made, of course, of the work she'd done in st the study of the law around Amazon in particular. Many are waiting for what the FTC is going to do and bring in, in terms of the big one for Amazon in some way, shape or form. Does, does any of this perhaps arbiter an easier time for the big company, which of course we understand has been hiring a lot of ex-FTC people. I think the company is almost certain to be the subject of a complaint. The FTC has made so many commitments over the past couple of years that to not bring a monopolization case against Amazon would be seen as a fairly dramatic repeat uh, retreat. And indeed for the chair, uh, this has been held out as one of the main reasons she's at the agency. I think it does mean that the FTC is going to think perhaps a bit harder about how it assembles the proof that will make the case successful, because in these merger defeats, uh, what the courts have been saying is your evidence isn't good enough. And the last thing I think it does is that it probably gives Amazon more confidence that when the litigation process unfolds, that they're going to be able to meet the challenge. Uh, ultimately, as an enforcer, you gain credibility by winning. You don't have to win them all, but you have to win a critical mass of cases. And in Amazon, I think it's suggested if you're willing to mass all the resources that you need to take on the case, your prospects of success are going to be respectable. So I think that these defeats, in a sense, give them some, some confidence that they can prevail later on.